Today, we are calibrating for the energy and efficiency of the gamma detector. The gamma detector is based on a germanium crystal doped with lithium, which is why it's often referred to as the Geli. This calibration process is done entirely on the computer and no chemical reactions are involved in this video. For this calibration, we will need the following calibration sources. Americium-241, Cesium-137, Cobalt-60 and Europium-152. Let's begin with Americium. To take a spectrum, you go to Acquire, then MCB Properties and then select Presets to enter a lifetime of 300 seconds, which is efficient for a solid calibration in 5 minutes. A quick note on the key assignments, you can zoom into the spectrum with F8 and zoom out of it with F7. Using the up arrow key increases the channel or marker resolution and using the down arrow key decreases it. We can clearly see a peak and now we need to assign a gamma energy to it. To do this, zoom in with the arrow keys until you have the exact channel with the most counts. In this case it's channel 121. Use calculate and calibrate to assign the gamma energy listed in the isotope browser app for americium 241 which is 59.54 kilo electron volts for the efficiency calibration you will need to mark the peak in the region of interest and click on it the database identifies our americium as tantalum 182 which we can ignore what interests us is the gross and the net area the gross area describes the absolute number of counts measured in the channels in the roy while the net area represents the background corrected counts that came from the channel in the roy for gamma radiation there's always a background and in this case it's automatically been subtracted. So net area includes only the gamma rays that are emitted by our samples. Or you can make things easier by just directly noting the CPS of the net area, which will come in handy later in our calculations. CPS stands for counts per second. In America, you mostly use counts per minute, but that's just a factor of 60. Next, we move to season 137. Here, we also have a very distinct peak we can assign the energy of 661 kilo electron volts to the channel 1335. Note that the program only accepts periods and not comma. The background corrected counts measured in the ROI were 2774 counts per second in total. Now to proceed with cobalt 60. This element has two gamma peaks. One at 1173 kilo electron volts and the other at 1332 kilo electron volts. For the lower energy peak, the ROI shows a count rate of 115 CPS. And for the high energy peak, it's 101 CPS. Lastly, we measure europium 152. And there's a lot of work to be done. Europium's variety of peaks from low to high energy makes it a great calibration source. We take the eight peaks with the highest occurrence probability, 121, 244, 344, 778, 964, 1085, 1112 and 1408 kilo electron volts. Now you note down the net area CPS values from the marked ROI and now you're ready to do the efficiency calibration. On to the calculations. We here have the most important formula to calculate the activity of a sample on the measurement day. For this, the following information are needed. The original activity and the date on which this activity was measured. The activity of the cesium sample used to be 433 kilo becquerel on August 1st, 1996 at 12 o'clock. The half-life, T1 half, needs to be converted into seconds and the time since the original measurement of the calibration source should also be used in seconds. This comes out to a theoretical season 137 activity on the measurement day of 233,159 becquerel. However, we are measuring gammas and not every decay results in the emission of a 661 kilo electron volt gamma quantum. So the occurrence probability of 85% also needs to be considered. Meaning that the Geely should detect 198,418 counts per second. All the values are not rounded due to me being lazy, but because there are just no half decays and the measurement accuracy is not high enough for decimate values to make sense. Now let's proceed with the efficiency calculation. The net area CPS from before in the ROI is divided by the theoretical CPS. The result is an efficiency of 1.4% for the gamma energy of 661 kiloelectron volts. Let's record that. 
Do you understand the calculations? If not, all right, let me explain it using, again, a very low energy americium sample. The difference here, of course, is the original activity as well as the half-life. However, what remains the same is the time elapsed since the sample was produced with that activity. This results in an activity on the measurement day of 357,285 Becquerel. And including the occurrence probability of the 59 kilo electron volt gamma line, it theoretically should detect 128,266 counts per second. However, only 3,813 CPS were measured, resulting in an efficiency of 2% for the 59 kilo electron volt line. Since a line only needs two values and it's only possible to anticipate the curve with a third value, we will need to do this calculation at least one more time. I will use the values for the 121 kilo electron volt europium line for that. Quickly input the values. This sample is older than the other two and it should be noted that you should take the occurrence probability for the correct emission. Now calculating the efficiency, which is 7%, you should start to see a trend. Why is the efficiency generally so low and why this energy curve looks the way it does? Feel free to comment your hypothesis in the comment section and here are the data for the other sample if you would like to calculate all that by yourself to practice a bit or something. A special thanks goes to the Working Group of Analytics and Fundamental Nuclear Chemistry from Dr. Erik Strupp and the Division of Nuclear Chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons John, Ben and Nico. With that being said, goodbye!